Pensioner John Rennie thought he was losing his mind when his money kept disappearing. So he installed hidden cameras. What he didn't expect to find was his own neighbour and so-called mate ransacking his house. So he's a horrible little grub. It is the ultimate betrayal of trust. It is very upsetting. John Rennie couldn't believe it when he saw who was stealing from him. He was stealing from me in the morning, and then he'd come over and we'd have a couple of beers. But he never brought any. Pav, Pav Tark, Chris Allen from A Current Affair, mate. This is John's neighbour and friend, Pav Tark. Just wanted to ask you some questions, if I could, about your neighbour stealing from your neighbour. What was your reaction when you saw who was coming into your house and taking money? Got it. Because he was, he was regarded as a good friend. My son's been over there and thanked him for looking after me, you know, by, by helping me out here and there. John's a pensioner who's legally blind and lives alone. Pav Tark lives across the street and befriended John when the 79-year-old moved in seven years ago. Six months ago, John says money started mysteriously disappearing. Firstly, there was just money being stolen out of my wallet and whatever I had. So to stop that, I put a safe in. So how do you think he was getting into your property? He had driven me in previously from his cab, parked in the drive, mate, watched me get the key. He has got the key and got a key cut so he can just come and go. And when the safe went in, money started disappearing from there too. You confided in him. You told him that you'd got a safe and, and he was telling you to put money in the safe. Yeah, well, he wanted it filled up, didn't he? <laughs> Well, it would seem so. Being forgetful, John had written the combination of the safe on a piece of paper and hid it. But he thinks Pav found it, and that's how he could easily open it up. My daughter was birthday the 28th of December. I got her a birthday card, put $100 in that, which I put in the safe. So he found the envelope, took the $100 out. Charming, out of a birthday card. Out of a birthday card. It's pretty low act. I know. Pav, can you tell us what sort of man would do that, would steal from a disabled pensioner like that? There's the safe that you got to enter because he's already found the number. The camera is right opposite. It's just up there, shining directly into it. John worked out on one occasion he and Pav were at a Christmas gathering nearby and Pav left to rifle his place and then went back to the party. And he's gone right through all my wardrobe, found this, looked on the inside pocket and there was $400 in there that he got. If your home is your castle, then John's security has well and truly been breached. He knows of four occasions when his former mate has been inside his place, rifling through his things and stealing cash. And John believes that's just the tip of the iceberg. He knows when I'm coming and when I'm going, and he knows my movements. My son picks me up, no, I'm not... takes me over to his place, so he's got a full night to go through my place. And have you spoken to him since the police became involved? My son and I went over there, showed him a little bit of the footage, and then when the police came round, went to arrest him, and he said, oh, he said, oh, I admit to just going in there and having a look around. But he didn't know how much footage we, we had at that stage. John says in four days he caught Pav on camera four times and all up, John believes he's lost hundreds of dollars. It's, it's probably in the 2000 area, I think. Around about two grand, I'd say. John takes his videos to the police who charge Pav Tark with three counts of entering a premises with intent and one count of burglary. When it gets to court, Tark pleads guilty and he's given nine months in jail, but the sentence is wholly suspended. And from where John sits, that's not justice at all. Very disappointed, I thought that he should have at least got some sort of punishment. Some sort of punishment. It was community affairs, or a fine, or something. But he got nothing. He was supposed to pay you $200 in compensation. Have you ever received that? No. Think you're likely to? 
No. Surely you can talk to us about this one, Pav. Pav Tark is a taxi driver, and even though John says Tark's family told him Pav had lost his job because of the stealing conviction, when we caught up with him, Pav was still at work. I see you're still driving taxis, mate. He um, doesn't seem to have any guilt or remorse. And has this shaken your faith in humanity? No, just in him. And John tells us he still has not seen any of the compensation Pavtark is supposed to pay him.